everybody. So here we are. We are reading another Diana Hutz Aston book. This one is called A Rock is Lively. Huh? A rock is lively. What do you think that lively means? The word lively means full of life and energy, right? Rocks aren't alive, so how can they be full of life? Hmm. Thinking about the other books we've read in this set, what about rocks might make them lively? Think about what you already know about rocks, and as I read, think about new information you're learning about rocks. Also, think about what makes Diana Hutt Aston's books special. All right, a rock is lively. So I want to first pause on the gallery here. So the gallery is showing all kinds of different rocks. And if you remember from our other books, they had pages like this at the beginning and the end. So I'm curious to find out what is going to be at the end of this book. Maybe you have a prediction. A rock is lively. Here's an azurite geode. I hope I'm pronouncing that right. Azurite? Oh, I bet it's azurite. Azurite geode. A chrysocoa? Granite? Sandstone? Here's a Fairburn agate. Oh, I love agates. Huh, here's silver. A rock is lively. A rock is lively. Here's a snowflake obsidian. Bubbly like a pot of soup deep beneath the earth's crest, liquid, molten, boiling. Look at that. Depending on what type of rock it is, a rock melts at temperatures between 1,300 and 2,400 degrees Fahrenheit, or 700 and 1,300 degrees Celsius. So remember how Diana um, Hutton Aston writes these books, is she has the big topic in cursive, in big letters, and then she writes about the topic a little bit more, and it's kind of like poetry. It's pretty. And then she gives these cool little details right here. A rock is mixed up. All rocks are made of a mix of ingredients called minerals. Just as a batter of flour, butter, and sugar makes a cookie, a batter of minerals makes a rock. The recipe for a rock might include minerals like aluminum, copper, diamond, fluorite, gold, gypsum, lead, nickel, platinum, quartz, silver, sulfur, tin, topaz, and turquoise. Lapsus lazuli. Mix the mineral lazurite with a dash of sodalite and a pinch of both calcite and pyrite. Heat within the earth until a brilliant blue. Lapis lazuli. Oh man, that's pretty. Rocks are amazing. Ooh, a rock is galactic. Outer space is a shower of rocky fireworks. Here's an asteroid. Meteoroid. Meteoroids are rocks that range in size from a grain of sand to a basketball. They become meteors or shooting stars when they streak through the Earth's atmosphere and vaporize. 
Sometimes pieces of meteor aren't vaporized and land on Earth's surface. These are called meteorites. Do you guys remember the story that we read about meteorites? Comets are balls of rock and ice, sometimes called dirty snowballs that are heated by the sun and soar through space, leaving glowing ribbons of dust behind them. Here's a comet. Asteroids are gigantic chunks of rocks and metal. They can weigh millions of tons. The largest known asteroid is 650 million, no, 650 miles. Oh my, okay, so the largest known asteroid is 650 miles, 1,050 kilometers in diameter, wow. It would take a person 352 hours or nearly 15 days to walk around it. Oh, a rock is old. The oldest known rocks on Earth were formed billions of years before the sky turned from green to blue, before dinosaurs thundered across the earth, before humans learned how to make fire. The oldest rocks are found, ever found are nearly 4.5 billion years old. So here is a table of rocks with little labels on them. Are you noticing something about how these rocks are organized? So these are organized from oldest to youngest. You can call 2.5 billion years young. Here's a meteorite fragment from Algeria 4.4 billion years ago. Greenstone from Canada, 4.28 billion years old. Here's a zircon crystal from Australia, 4.1 years old. Look at that thing, that's really cool. Here's a Lucian genus, no, a, Lu, a Lucian niece from Scotland, 3 billion years old, and granite from the United States, 2.5 billion years old. A rock is huge, considered by many to be the world's largest rock. Australia's Mount Augustus is a sandstone rock with an elevation or height of 3,628 feet above sea level, about 1,000 feet higher than the world's tallest skyscraper. That is a big rock. Or tiny. The carpets of sand on the floor and shores of oceans, lakes, and rivers come from large rocks that have been ground through weathering into tiny grains. Have you ever looked at sand through a magnifying glass? You will see all these tiny little rocks. It's pretty amazing. A rock is helpful. Some birds swallow stones to help them digest food as the muscles in the gizzards of their stomachs move. Food is chewed, crushed by rocks into the same in the same way humans use teeth to break down food. Hmm. Crocodiles, seals and sea lions also ingest rocks. The extra weight or ballast helps them dive deeper and stay steady in water. Sea otters lie on their backs and use rocks to crack open shells on their stomachs. Seagulls drop mollusks onto rocks to break apart their shells. Chimpanzees and crows crack the hard shells of nuts on rocks. A rock is surprising. Some rocks need to be broken open to reveal their beauty. Geodes, round, hollow rocks found mostly in deserts or beds of volcanic ash, 
hide sparkly crystals where once liquid where once liquids but trapped inside rock for thousands of years they changed into jewels of many colors agates too with their colorful layers created by liquid deposits are often found in volcanic rocks aren't those amazing Look at this page again. A rock is inventive. Long ago, humans chiseled rocks into sharp-edged weapons and tools. Flaky flint and obsidian rocks were chipped into arrowheads, spear points, axes, and hammers. Rough granite, sandstone, and lava rocks were shaped into mortars and pestles used for grinding seeds, rice, nuts, chili, and garlic into food. So here's a hammer from France, an axe head from England, an arrow head from the United States, a spear point from Africa, and a knife from the United States. And this is a mortar and pestle found in Greece. Today, humans use rocks to make cement and bricks, paper and pencils, glass and toothpaste. Wow. There's graphite. That's what's in our pencils. A rock is creative. Tens of thousands of years ago, before there was writing, ancient people told stories through symbols. With colors made from minerals, they painted pictographs on cave walls, rock shelters, or ledges. They chipped and pecked the surface of stones to make petroglyphs. So you can see here, this is a pictograph where they actually used the um, colors made from minerals and painted these on the walls. And then you've got also got pictographs where they or petroglyphs, I'm sorry, petroglyphs, where they've actually carved into the stone to make the picture. So this is a petroglyph from Nine Miles Canyon in Utah. It's 1,000 years old. And then here is a pictograph um, from France, 12,000 to 17,000 years old. And here's some of the different minerals that can be used to make the um, pictographs. In more recent history, artists and builders have chiseled great sculptures and monuments from all kinds of rocks. Here's basalt and other volcanic rocks in Easter Island. You might have seen these figures before, seen pictures of them. Here's the pyramids. Here's Stonehenge. Here's the Taj Mahal made out of marble. Mother and child made out of um, ox. Here's marble, the famous sculpture by Michelangelo called David. And here is granite, Mount Rushmore. <clears throat> A rock is recycled. <coughs> Sedimentary rocks like coal and limestone have eroded over time into smaller pieces of sand pebbles and gravel, then were pressed together like a layer cake with fossils, seashells, and decayed plants. Metamorphic rocks begin as sed sedimentary or igneous, but were baked and squeezed so hard by heat and pressure they became metamorphic rocks like slate and marble. Igneous rocks are formed by magma, when magma erupts through volcanoes, it cools and hardens into rocks like granite and pumice. Pumice is so lightweight, it floats. Have you ever seen that? A rock doesn't hurry. Over thousands of millions of years, it changes from one form to another. This is called the rock cycle in a process called erosion. A rock is squashed and scraped by glaciers, whirled by waves and rain, and pushed deep into the earth until it turns into magma. 
Then a rock is once again lively. Now remember I told you about that end page. Now look at what we see. What's different? All right, I look forward to hearing your comments. Remember to write a complete sentence in your response when you type in your comment. And you can also make a video of your response. Sometimes that's easier to say more. All right, I look forward to seeing you all soon.